Welcome to Anzac Day 2020. I'll be your host and I'd like to start by welcoming you and all of our special guests that have joined us online. Steve Grace will be sharing his moving song, Unknown Hero. Bush poet Tony Gunter will be reciting his well-known poem, To the Sunburnt Ear. Our padre, Cole Stringer, will bring a relevant message to these current times we find ourselves in. We'll be joined by our local federal member, the member for Wide Bay, Mr. Lou O'Brien. Now let's all be upstanding for the national anthem of Australia and New Zealand. Australians, oh let us rejoice for we are young and free with golden soil and wealth for toil our home is girt by sea our land abounds in nature's gifts of beauty rich and rare in history's page let every stage advance australia fair in joyful strains then let us sing advance australia fair This year, at this time, more than ever, Anzac Day is about gratitude. Gratitude and gratefulness for the lives that we enjoy. The very lives that we tend to take for granted. And thankfulness for those who have fought to preserve these freedoms and our way of life. Today I'm dressed as a World War I light horseman. The light horse definitely embodied those Anzac values of courage, mateship, sacrifice, and perseverance. However, for me, they just seem to live those values out even larger. These boys were from the bush. They were tough and strong. They could ride well and shoot straight. There was a bit of Aussie larrikinism thrown in there too. This is a song for them. He was still 17 when they gave him a gun and sent him off to the war. Didn't understand what was really going on. The reasons that he'd be fighting for. 
said goodbye to his family, farewell to his friends, and a life in that little Midwest town. He didn't know if he'd be coming back again to the war with his mates he was bound. and the freedom of this land and at Gallipoli he died for you and me the unknown hero the young soldier man I'd always heard a lot about the terrible defeat at Gallipoli and all the lives lost. What I hadn't heard a lot about was the Anzac journey throughout the Middle East and in particular the Holy Lands and the amazing victories that were won and the lives that were saved. In 2017, I journeyed to Gallipoli. I saw their remains scattered throughout those battlefields. We went on to Egypt and to the pyramids where the light horse camped with their horses. Through Jordan and into Israel we journeyed. We retraced their very steps. I stood where they stood. I rode through the wadis. I crossed the desert on horseback three days. I climbed to the top of Chevelle's Hill and I looked across that plain, that vast open plain that those mad Aussies charged headlong into an impossible, impossible goal. The British infantry divisions had bombarded the outskirts of Besheva relentlessly and on the morning of the 31st of October 1917, the New Zealand Mounted Rifle Brigades decimated machine gun redoubt known as Tal El Sabah, making the way clear for the Australian Light Horse 
to finalise the victory with that miraculous charge. Well, good morning, Australia. Uh, greetings from Tennessee. Be good to be invited along and uh, good to see some familiar faces. To the Sunburn Air was written 26 years ago, and I wrote it to say thank you, uh, not just on my behalf, but on behalf of the grateful nation. And uh, I'm glad that it's, uh, it's continued on through the years. And um, I think I've recorded it live probably half a dozen times in 26 years. Most people just play the recording and uh, with the music. But this morning, you're going to get the grandpa version. I'm just going to read it to you from the book and uh, pretend my grandkids are in front of me. So here we go. Our homeland was carved out by the Bushmen, being defended by our heroes at war. We were lucky to have both. <laughs> nah, they're the same. You see, our heroes were just Bushmen before. And the women whose hearts grew beside them, who stood by them, over here and over there, have since inspired a nation that has since given birth to their heirs. The price that we paid for our freedom was the best that we had to give. The cream of young generations have been buried so the unborn could yet live. The blood and bone that's been shed for the Southland has raised a crop like none else on earth. A people of heart, an invincible spirit, a people of immeasurable worth. Little wonder our enemies hated the sight of the one-sided hat. They knew wherever they saw it was not the place to be at. Because even... Even if both sides had run out of bullets, they had learned there was one left to fear. The digger with the heart of the bushman, a bayonet and a sunburnt left ear. You may have come from the city or milked cows or dag sheep for a quid, been a tradesman or managed a business. It mattered not what he did. You see, if you're born a son or a daughter of this Southland, in a hospital bed or at back of the bar. The bush, the bush is not something you live in. The bush is just something you are. And as long as there's dust at the base of the rock, there'll be those who are willing to die for the right of every Australian to walk free under clear southern skies. And those who go forth to defend it, this land, this people, of such infinite worth, will always be, without doubt, the finest soldiers on earth. And others will ask, well, what quality makes them so different? They didn't win every fight. They were rough and not as respectful or as well equipped as they might. Well, we'll never satisfy their questions because the answer only we'll understand. They never left home for the battle with an intention or a desire to hate. They went to war with the mind of a soldier for the heart and soul of a mate. So when they ask from over the ocean by what writing, high tribute or honour, should we mark the graves of your dead? I know what I'd tell them. I'd tell them, if you just mark them, Australian. No greater tribute, no higher honour could ever be thought of, written or said. Because to those who know, who have stood at the wall, to those who know, one word, one word says it all. To the sunburnt ear, thanks for that moving tribute, Tony. Our response to the Anzac story must always be one of gratitude and appreciation.
for the freedom we enjoy today. We must never forget the costs that they paid and we must strive to model those great Anzac values today. Courage, mateship, sacrifice and perseverance. We need these values today more than ever. Let's hear a word of encouragement from our Padre. Thanks, Cole. G'day, Chad, Steve, and all you other wonderful blokes out there. You know, it's my privilege just to talk a little bit about on the Anzac spirit. You know, something that's very real with me. My grandfather rode with the light horse. My dad fought the Japanese in, in, in New Guinea. My mum's brother won the military cross on Kokoda for coolness and courage under fire. So it's very real to me, you know. But I believe that the Bible talks about that. You know, the only man that Jesus ever commended for his faith was actually a Roman centurion. He said, I've not found faith anywhere in the land like this man. So, you know, just think about what can we learn from our Anzac forefathers? What could they possibly teach us today as we face this crisis that we're in right now? Maybe the greatest crisis in the last hundred years. If you go to Ishurava up on Kokoda Trail, Second World War, we're under the threat of invasion by the Japanese. They're coming across the Owen Stanley Range. They could get to see the lights of Port Moresby. If they can take Port Moresby, they can launch an invasion of this country. And at one stage at Ishirava, we have 110 young Aussies standing up, holding off a horde of Japanese, you know, professional soldiers. And actually, eventually they prevail. And if you go to Ishirava today, there's a monument there that sums up the Anzac spirit. In four words, it says courage, it says mateship, it says sacrifice and endurance. All of those are biblical principles. Think about that, everyone. Courage today is in short supply, whether it be in the church or the world. The world's panic stricken right now. But, but courage is not the absence of fear. If you've never had fear, you've either had a lobotomy or you're a liar. Everybody experiences fear. But courage is simply suck it up, tough it out, and do it even if you have to do it scared. You think about these young men, and they're facing, you know, odds, uh, you know, something like 10, 12 to 1. One young man writes, he says, here, I prayed a lot. I believe in prayer. I know my mum and dad are praying for me. That helps a lot. And of course, I've got my mates. And when you've got good mates, you don't leave them. It's called a brotherhood. We got a message from Port Moresby yesterday. We're going to have to stay here and fight to the death. Let that sink in for a moment. 17 years old, never really experienced life, stay and fight to the death. He writes, that's horrifying, I thought. I'll never see my family again. I'll never see Australia again. But I'm prepared to stay here and fight to the finish with my mates because that's my responsibility as the man of the family. I, I, I love that. So courage, you know, as I say here, is a biblical principle. When God spoke to Joshua, he said, be strong and very courageous, strength and courage. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound mind. I love that. So what can we learn? As I say from our Anzac forefathers, today we can learn something about courage. The second thing which I love is mateship. John 15 verse 13, Greater love has no man than this, than he lay down his life for his friends. Not just inconvenience himself, lay down his life. If there's one positive from this whole corona thing, Maybe it's brought us back to the place where we're talking to one another, to our family, to our neighbours. You know, most of us live lonely lives. We've got these great houses, build big walls. We don't even know our next door neighbours. All of a sudden now, we're talking to other people. I love that. Mateship. You know, that's a, a term we don't even understand anymore. Hijacked by the media, by politicians. But it, it actually means to lay down your life. I saw the great Bishop T.D. Jakes interviewed by Brian Houston. Hey, T.D. Jakes? front cover of Time magazine, one of the most influential preachers of our time. And Brian asked him, he said, what would you like to be remembered for, Bishop, biggest church, best ministry? And I thought this would be good. And for a moment, the bishop thought and he said, Brian, I'd like to be remembered as a loyal friend in an age of relationship deficits. Mateship is truly biblical. Paul talks about everybody deserting him, but Onesiphorus and Ephrodites were the only two that stayed with him. You know, if I can just say this, one other thing, in your life you'll have many acquaintances, but very, very few friends. If you have more than five friends in your entire life, people you can rely, build your life on, you're doing real good. Let me just close off. My wife, a few years ago, one of her best friends was dying of cancer. She went to visit her in hospital. She rang me up and she said, my friend's dying and she's dying alone. 
No one should have to die alone. So she said, I asked the doctor, can I stay here, wheel another bed into the ward, I'll eat here, whatever, because I don't want my friend to die alone. So she rang me in the early hours of the morning and she said, sitting on the bed, holding hands with a friend as she went off to heaven. It shouldn't be like that. As I say, mateship, greater love is no man than this, than he lay down his life for his friends. These young men didn't fight for the king or country. They fought for each other. Let me just close off, you know, Fighting Mackenzie, awesome man, chaplain. And, you know, they're at Lone Pine. They're about to make the charge on Lone Pine. The first two waves have gone over, been shot down. And Mackenzie's in the front line trenches in his mid-40s. And the commanding officer comes up and says, Chaplain, you're not even supposed to be in these front lines. Get out. Mackenzie, ex-stockman, six foot five, stands up and he says, Sir, I'm not a rebellious person, but sometimes you've got to answer to a higher authority and you're not it. I'd follow a man like that. He turns to these young men, he says, I've lived with you, I've prayed with you, I've eaten with you, I'm not afraid to die with you. Hey, think about that courage, mateship, sacrifice, endurance. What can we learn from our Anzac forefathers, these young men and women that lay their lives down? We can learn something about guts, courage, and definitely something about mateship. So praise God on this wonderful day of Anzac. Let's remember the heritage of our Anzac forefathers. Thank you, Cole. Now let's cross to our federal member for Wide Bay, Mr. Lou O'Brien, who's at our local cenotaph. Over to you, Lou. Like you, I've attended many Anzac Day services throughout my life. And this Anzac Day service is so different in so many ways. We need to stay apart, but remain connected to uh, keep ourselves and each other safe from the coronavirus. But this does not diminish the importance of Anzac Day and our respect for all who have served and continue to serve. I commend the Karoi and District Historical Troop for connecting us this way so we can commemorate and reflect on the courage and bravery, honour, valour and sacrifice of the Anzacs who helped to secure our freedom and shape the course of our nation. We stand in awe of their dedication and service. And it is their spirit who Prime Minister Scott Morrison acknowledged that we are to summon now to get us through this very difficult and troubling time. Their service gives us cause to deeply reflect on the meaning of Anzac Day. We all remember with gratitude the sacrifices made by our first Anzacs as well as the efforts of servicemen and women in the front line since then, who continue to serve our country, risking their lives to keep Australians safe and securing peace and freedom around the world. More than 50,000 Australians are estimated to have fought at Gallipoli, where some 8,700 lost their lives and almost 18,000 were wounded. Our nation owes an enormous debt to these Australians whose courage, determination and bravery have become part of the Australian way. Anzac Day commemorations help younger Australians to gain a deeper appreciation of our wartime history and the role that war has played in shaping our nation. I hope that all young Australians learn the Anzac story and pass it on to future generations. This year, 2020, Australia marks 75 years since victory in the Pacific and the end of World War II. 75 years ago across Australia, crowds gathered in the thousands in cities and towns to celebrate the end of the conflict and to commemorate the men and women who served so bravely. For many in Australia, the end of the war in the Pacific was marked by celebration. For others, it was a day of sombre commemoration and relief. For those who lost loved ones, the cost was high. Almost 40,000 Australians had been killed out of around 1 million who had served. This year, we also marked the 105th anniversary of the Gallipoli campaign. In the fire of battle, they forged the Anzac spirit, which endures in the bravery of those Australian Defence Force personnel that serve us today. 
50 years ago, Australia began to wind down its military effort in Vietnam with the departure of the 8th Battalion. For those who served in the Second World War, I thank you for your service and all you did to protect our shores. And I pay tribute to the contribution of all Defence Force personnel in the Army, Navy and Air Force who have served in war, conflict and peacekeeping operations, who for more than a century have done our nation proud. As we pause, reflect and remember those who have served and those who have given their lives for our country, we recall the three words which mean so much and we will forever remember, lest we forget. Thank you. Thank you, Lou. We are now heading across the ditch to New Zealand to hear from a member of the New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade. I'm from the New Zealand Mounted Rifles. We've been over to Australia and ridden with you guys a number of times. We've always been well looked after and the Anzac spirit is truly alive and well. As you can hear, I'm a Brit <laughs> by birth. Uh, I've lived in New Zealand now for 15 years, so I'm pretty well indoctrinated with Anzac Day and what it means. Uh, it's also my chance to remember my family's fallen, um, people who went to the First World War and never came back. It's a great privilege for us, the members of the New Zealand Mounted Rifles, to be able to ride on Anzac Day. New Zealand Mounted Rifles was set up to raise money and raise awareness for PTSI, post-traumatic stress injury. Uh, we hope we've done some good over the four or five years that we've been going. Uh, we'll continue to go to, to do what we do. This year we were booked for Geraldine on the South Island. Uh, really looking forward to going, but sadly that was not to be. Uh, COVID-19 has taken its toll. Uh, luckily in New Zealand, we've escaped pretty lightly, but uh, anyway, you staying at home is the most important thing you can do. A small sacrifice when you consider what the people in, world, in all the world wars and uh, also conflicts that New Zealand soldiers have attended throughout time. So please stay at home. God bless. Now I have a closing prayer from our Padre. So Father, I just pray for those people out there watching right now on Anzac Day. Lord, that we're not glorifying war, but we're giving honour where honour's due. These young men and women lay down their lives for our nation. Father, we're just so grateful for the grace of God that, that's on our nation right now. And as we go through this crisis, our faith and our trust is in you. But we can also give honour where honour's due. And on this day, we honour those men and women that lay down their lives. Father, I speak blessings to everyone out there watching. I call you the head and not the tail and above and not beneath. Whatever you turn your hands to shall prosper and succeed. Be strong, be courageous, for your God is with you. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them, lest we forget.